there's, there's tragedy in the world. Mm. And many times we're saddened and, and question why these terrible things happen to people. Uh, a name you might not be familiar with, uh, Nabil uh, Qureshi. He was a Pakistani American, a Muslim turned Christian, 34 year old speaker for the uh, Ravi Zacharias Ministries. He died this past September after a year long battle with stomach cancer. He left behind his wife and a two year old daughter. And you might ask, why God took him at such a young age, uh, when he was still so active, effective, and passionate in ministry. You know, we don't always understand God's ways, but there is always strength and peace provided by observing the love of God and the love for God. Even up until Nabil's last days, he was still loading uploading video clips testifying about Jesus. And he was praying naturally to be uh, kept alive for his family, but there reached a point that uh, death was inevitable. And he said, but if it shouldn't be your will, your sovereign will at the end of the day, then I trust you and I love you anyway. And when you read these tragic stories, it's sad, but at the same time, it seems like God takes tragedy and uses it to benefit others. Uh, last week for communion, we sang, uh, It Is Well With My Soul. Uh, for many people, if you would ask them, they might tell you that's their favorite hymn. There's something about that hymn that uh, really just tugs at our heartstrings. Uh, I know for myself, the words, especially the second verse, um, the way the music enveloped those words. And I found something out about that, that hymn that I wanted to share with you today. Uh, Kelly has, has read the, the background of that hymn, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. Um, so I won't spend a whole lot of time on that. Uh, the, uh, the man that wrote the words, his name was Horatio Spafford, and he was a lawyer and a businessman in Chicago. And in uh, 1871, his uh, young son, who was only two years old, died with pneumonia. That same year was the Great Chicago Fire, and the Chicago Fire uh, destroyed a lot of properties that he owned. Uh, he was a very wealthy man. Um, he, he had some early tragedies uh, in his life, and then he was sending his wife and four daughters to Europe. And he sent them on ahead because uh, he had some business things to take care of because of the Chicago Fire. About four days into the trip, uh, the ship that they were on, which was called the SS Ville du Havre, collided with another ship and, and, and was sunk. And uh, somehow his wife was saved in the wreckage, but his four daughters were lost. Um, when his wife eventually, with, you know, might have been within a week, you know, reached a point where she could wire him, and she said, saved alone. What do I do? And, uh, you know, we're so, we're so spoiled by internet, you know, this, this was days. And he decided to, you know, get board the first ship that he could, and he, four days into the trip, the captain called him to his quarters, and he said, this is where your daughter's drowned. And uh, he wrote the words, for it is well with my soul, over the place where his children went down. And our particular hymnal has three of the verses, and, and I wanted to share uh, the verses that, that we don't often see or hear. 
The one verse that's in here and words that are very powerful are, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say. And Spafford actually wrote, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to know. And somewhere along the way that got changed. Here's, here's one of the verses we don't ever often hear. Though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul. Another verse, for me be it Christ, be it Christ hence to live. If Jordan above me shall rule, no pang shall be mine, for in death is in life. Thou wilt whisper thy peace to my soul. Another one. But Lord, tis for thee, for thy coming we wait. The sky, not the grave, is our goal. O trump of the angel, O voice of the Lord, blessed hope, blessed rest of my soul. Those were the verses that somebody didn't put in the hymn. Um, very powerful. And what I found out the other day is Spafford wrote the words, which means so much to us. Philip Bliss wrote the music. Now, if you were looking the back of our hymnal, you would find many, many hymns that Philip Bliss wrote. Uh, he wrote, Hallelujah, what a Savior, wonderful words of life, Jesus loves even me, almost persuaded, I gave my life for thee, the light of the world is Jesus. And if you would look at those hymns, you would see the name Philip Bliss on the right as the composer of the music. And for many of them, you would see Philip Bliss on the left, he wrote the words. There's one hymn that you see Philip Bliss on the left. He wrote the words and he didn't write the music. And you know why? He and his wife were on a train, the Pacific Express, and in the process of crossing a trestle bridge, which collapsed, all of the cars went down into a ravine and caught fire, and they both perished in the fire. They were survived by their two sons, ages four and one. Really, really sad. And it's, it's just ironic that both the, the lyricist and the composer of It Is Well With My Soul, all, all that tragedy in their life. But you know, God took that and uh, he's just touched millions of people through that tragedy. And you know what, they found Philip Bliss's uh, trunk and somehow it escaped the fire. And they found a manuscript in there and the words to the hymn, I will sing of my Redeemer. That's the one hymn in here that you'll see Philip Bliss on the left and not on the right. So even in death, I will sing of my Redeemer. You know, uh, we're always gonna have tragedy because we live in a, in a, a world where uh, the sun is on the good and the evil, and the rain is on the righteous and the unrighteous. But when you, when you hear these stories of tragedy, the only way these people were able to handle these tragic events was because of the love that God showed at the cross. And it became part of their makeup. It's who they were. And it's, it strengthens us. You know, in the book of Acts, uh, when you read Stephen's sermon, I mean, that is just an incredible sermon. And you know what the last thing he said was? Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Where did he get that? From Jesus Christ on the cross. When he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. God's word, if we give it a chance, can become part of us. And it can become strength to others and peace for others. And 
Nabil Qureshi, although he was only 34, he left something for others, just as Jesus has left when he died so young in his ministry. He left the apostles, and he touched their lives, and these tragedies that we read about, that we see, and we're actually strengthened by the, the, uh, the peace that the Christians have in these situations. And uh, it's just amazing how God uses all things for good. Let us pray. Father God, when we, when we think of tragic events, we think of the cross. Why did that have to be that way? It had to be that way because of our sins. There had to be a sacrifice so that we could come to you. Be with us now, Father, as we partake of this bread, which represents the body of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray this in his precious name. Amen.